Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talking About Birds, the only Cardinal podcast that, like the first two games in Miami, is longer than it should be. My name is Nate Heininger, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Ben Samorka. Hey, Nate H. If you have an idea for the opening bit, text or leave us a voicemail at 848-48-BIRDS. All right, Hambone, you're alive, which is yeah. a key accomplishment from yeah. last week's race. Um, but before we before we do get into the the, the race coverage and then obviously our, our Cardinal news and whatnot, yeah. I do want to take a moment. Um, we, we failed to recognize that we are deep in, in dads and grads season right now. So... Uh, <laughs> I want to say um, happy Father's Day yeah. to all the daddies out there. Wow. I'm talking daddies, stepdaddies, surrogate daddies, uh, uh, fur daddies, what? Uh, leather daddies. What? Uh, <laughs> all of you out there putting in the work, happy Father's Day. Just from Nate, I, I don't <laughs> offer a happy Father's Day. <laughs> Okay. Um, so if you're just joining us, uh, Hambone participated in a, in a silly little event over the weekend. Wow. Um, that I am intentionally demeaning. Um, but, uh, I sounds like it went kind of well, at least you didn't explode. Now the question everyone wants, everyone wants to know, yeah. uh, did you get covered in puke this time? Did not get covered in puke. Wow. Uh, the driver who puked our car last race um, did get sick again while driving. I think driving <laughs> might not be his thing. He <laughs> took a bunch of Dramamine, um, hopped in the car. That and, seems bad, too. Uh, yeah. So when he got in the car, we were all... I was like just sitting there in my fire suit waiting for the call. Uh-huh. Uh, the call came, um, and we got him out before... He what, does he vomited. only go driving once a year on this thing? Was there no attempt at testing his capacity before the race? So he did te- do a test lap on Friday the night before the race in the dark because he had never raced in the dark before. Uh-huh. Um, and he felt fine. And yeah, I don't know. I will tell you, like, I think I described it last week. It's like being on a roller coaster for two hours straight. It yeah. is um, like... I, I, for whatever reason, I've never really gotten sick from roller coasters or yeah. driving like any, I, I have a strong stomach in that sense. Um, being on boats, whatever. I just never feel that way. Um, and I, I don't know, I guess okay, he's cool susceptible brag. to it, but yeah, <laughs> what a brag <laughs> I can ride on a boat for hours, bro. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Uh, could yeah, it, I'm just not could, susceptible to motion sickness. So, yeah. and, and some people are, and, um, if you are driving a race car is not a great idea. Could it? So, but he did fine on Friday, then did poorly in the race and happened yeah. last year too. Could it be the, uh, cinnamon toast crunch bugle hamburgers that you were providing to him that might Tell have you upset what. the stomach? Tell, I know you're trying to talk shit right now. I sold those bitches out in like 45 minutes. Were you actually selling them? No, no. Okay. But like I was, I was sitting in front of our paddock, you know, after the track gets hot, on a uh, Friday night, everybody's, you know, walking around having beers and I'm, I was passing out Pikachu sliders. Like I was going out of business, sold them all out. Uh, everybody was, was digging on them. The bugles were a point of conversation. Um, some people <laughs> yeah. liked them. Some people didn't like them. One person asked if they could just take the bag, uh, yeah. wh- while I was still cooking and uh, obviously, you know, I, I needed those. So, well, uh, I am in a vacuum on yeah. its own, a cinnamon crunch bugle. Yeah, seems like a perfectly fine treat. Absolutely, um, it's it is placed atop a ham and cheese or a, a cheeseburger. Yeah, it, it with ketchup. The ketchup, yeah. I think, is what really gets me about the the whole thing. Yeah, um, it just sounds horrible. But I think you need to open your mind a little bit. And, you know, sweet and salty I mean, always works. I'll try anything once. Don't get me wrong, and and I love cinnamon. It's one of my favorite flavors. But uh, added to it. A ketchup cheeseburger just sounds 
pretty bad. I also had Japanese mayo. Um, so we were, you know, I was encouraging okay. people to do a little uh, QP mayo ketchup. Little mayo and, ketchup. Uh, yeah, yeah, the bugles on top. Yeah, so I, I, it was working. I sold out. Um, it was a big deal. So everybody was chomping. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Wow. And then uh, your guy puked them all over your, your car. <laughs> Luckily, no. Um, although I would have taken that as a compliment from the uh, <laughs> chef's point of view. Yeah. Chefs classically love it when <laughs> someone throws up after they eat their food. We well, all if know you that. ate so much that you threw oh, up. That's, yeah. that's a compliment. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yes, chef. So, Thank you, chef. So the Pikachu car driven by a Bulbasaur, <laughs> did the car survive the trip? The car did great. Um, okay. Now, we had two cars. One car did not do so well. But the car that I was driving did great. It made it the whole time. Uh, we ended up getting seventh place in class and 14th overall. So wow. pretty amazing performance. Uh, you know, not to tap myself on the back too hard, but it went really, really well. Better than I expected it to go. Um, I will say so. You know, again, if you if you don't remember what I'm talking about, this is a 24 hour race. So it starts at noon on Saturday, ends at noon on Sunday. Um, and I was racing the car at about 3 a.m. And the lights began to flicker. We have lights to display our number on the outside of the vehicle and lights to see mm -hmm. um, in the front of the vehicle. They started Critical. to flicker uh -oh. and turned off while <laughs> I was driving. Um, which Not great. Maybe the scariest thing that's ever happened yeah. to me. Um, obviously I got black flagged, uh, the racing, uh, judges did not like the fact that I was driving around the track with no lights. Yeah. So I had to get off, get the car fixed and, and go through that. Black but, uh, flag. That sounds, sounds cooler than it actually is. I guess like, it just means you, you need pirate to come ship off the comes track. out and yeah. fires cannons yeah. at you. No pirates. Um, mm -hmm. but a lot of Pokemon. Wow. So 14th overall, I assume yep. this is out of 15, 16 total cars. What was the what was the amount? There were 70 entrants. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> so your goal, your goal was top 30, right? So yep. you actually uh, much better. Seventh in class, though. So what was the class like last so, and like worst, dumbest? <laughs> yeah, not going to graduate. A, class a, a, B, C. <laughs> And it's based on a pr approximation of the speed of the vehicle, the size of the engine. Mm. The judges put you in a class. So we are in B class. Um, mm. And I think there are, I think there were 35 or, or 36 participants in B class. And we got seventh in our, in our class. Nice. Yeah. Uh, any other standout car designs? Standout car designs. Um, there was a, uh, a Corvette. Uh, and the team, they did Daft Junk was their theme. <laughs> uh, so they were all dressed like Daft Punk, but like uh, nice. like a junkyard version of it. And they were just walking around the paddock blaming, uh, blaring Daft Punk with uh, mirrored helmets on. That was really good. That sounds fun. Uh, there was a Lucha Libre team that was just running around Classic. without shirts and masks on the whole time. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, that was a good time. There was a team called the Meat Wagon. The, the theme <laughs> didn't really make much sense. But when they rolled into the paddock, they had like 25 pounds of pork butt just on the top of their car and they smoked it and shared it with everybody. So that was cool. That sounds great. How does that not line up with meat wagon? What were you thinking? Well, like the car just they just wrote meat wagon on the side oh, of it. Okay. And then they smoked meat and that was their theme. So it wasn't the most thought through, but it benefited me greatly. So mm -hmm. I was happy about that. Uh, and then, yeah, there you know, you have your Star Wars and Mad Max themes sure. so like it's a very, very nerdy event. So anything nerd culture is going to be yeah. represented. Um, yeah, there's a couple of cops. Um, <laughs> just yeah, no just other a couple of cops or car like <laughs> people driving old cop cars. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think um, outside of that. Nothing super exciting from the when, theming when does this. When does this graduate into a twisted metal type situation where you're attaching rocket launchers and flamethrowers and things? Uh, well, I think if your president uh, uh, Biden gets elected, then it's uh, you know <laughs> hop, skip, and a jump, Nate, to the Thunderdome. No, wow, wow, that was getting, getting political. That, that was smooth. Well, well executed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, congratulations. Uh, yeah, it does sound you. like you guys did very well. So yeah, you know, nice, I had the, nice I had a, a fastest lap I've ever driven. Um, I had, uh, 
sold out my burgers. Uh, my costume was way too hot in the Colorado <laughs> summer. Uh, the what? worst part about the costume is that, so it's a Bulbasaur costume, right? And sure. if you know Bulbasaur, he's got this of course, giant. Of course I know Bulbasaur. <laughs> he's got this giant Coming leafy over this bulb. weekend. <laughs> He's got this giant leafy bulb on his back. Uh-huh. So the way that that was represented on my bulb. costume was just a big <laughs> piece of like felt. So I was just okay. walking around in 94 degree Colorado sun with a massive felt mm. bulb on my back, sweating my ass off. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I uh, I got to ride it. I've never driven a motorcycle. I drove a motorcycle this weekend. Oh, um, cool. It was scary. Um, but I didn't die. So that was cool. Yeah. I've never been, I've never driven or even been on a motorcycle as well. I have, um, um, I I like those sorts of thrills, but I've always had a general aversion to a motorcycle. Uh, Yeah. I got on a track like that probably I think is the ideal. It it was Uh, just around the paddock. I wasn't going that fast, but it was fun. Um, and the only other thing I'll say is I did go four off, uh, all four tires off the track in my first like 30 minutes of driving. Uh, cause I was, I was hot dogging it a little bit. I was like, do you mean in the air or into the side into the dirt? Okay. There are no ramps on this. <laughs> I didn't think so. But track, when you say yeah. all four tires off the track, like I'm your thinking, first thought is that I, I, I ramped. <laughs> yeah. <you> idiot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You clearly know. there, maybe there was like. Uh, a semi with, you know, towing cars and, and something and it sort of fell back fast and the furious style and you ramped off the top of it and then stole a bunch of DVD players. Man, I don't Nate, know what it must be like <laughs> just to live in one day inside that head. I can't even, it's so twisted, dude. <laughs> uh, so you went in the dirt. Cool. Um, what does that do? Is there like a, is there like a, a brown flag for going in the dirt? What does that do to you? Uh, well, uh, you could probably imagine that the car is much slower and has much less control in the dirt. So you, you lose quite games. a bit. Of time. I know how it, yeah. Uh, and then and uh, it's a scary. little man, it's... a little man in a cloud comes by, picks you up and puts <sighs> you back onto the track. Dude, one day in that head, <laughs> I don't know if I could hold on, man. It just, Shut it's just twisted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Calling back Mario Kart twisted. <laughs> You're just sick, dude. You're sick and, and twisted. That's all I can say. Um, so what's holding you back from first? Uh, what's holding us back from first is being quicker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, we tracks had, uh, yeah, it's some minutia, uh, minutia. Uh-huh. We were, uh, inside 70... turn, ben. what never break on a turn or, uh, <laughs> take the inside turn. Right. These are things. Sure. Yeah. 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 Race line. So on and so forth. Uh-huh. We are 70 laps behind first place. Yikes. Um, so if you spread that out over 24 hours, like it truly is minutia. It's being faster on uh, refueling, being faster on our, our, we had to do a tire and brake swap in the middle, being faster. Uh, we took a really long time bleeding the brakes at one point. Um, it just th- those like little things. If, if you speed all those up, that probably over 24 hours would probably get closer. But, uh, you know, it's it's yeah. also hard to be quick when it's 3 a.m. and the car is hot and you don't really feel like doing it. <laughs> so you just slammed four Pikachu sliders. You're uh, so I, feeling I, heavy. I did have a moment where I got out of the I got out of the car. Um, it's like 1 a.m. or something like that. And one of my partners uh, hops in the car and he's uh, he's only going for about 45 minutes and he starts feeling really drowsy, which is obviously unsafe when you're racing a car at 100 miles an hour at night. Sure. Uh, yeah. So he calls in and he's like, hey, Ben, I'm not feeling good. Can you swap me out? I had just eaten a Costco sized muffin and chugged an iced coffee and immediately got into a race car oh. with that in my belly. And it was, uh, you know, wasn't ideal. Yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> it was um, horrible. <laughs> Hey, speaking of Costco, I had for the first time, I had the the pep slice and the hot dog at, at Costco the other day. So That's cool. We're both putting in the work. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's good. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, there's no better deal in the world. That's, yeah. No. Shout out Costco. Big Costco head over here. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, you do have that Kirkland tattoo across your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the Cardinals. Yeah, uh, what the hell? <laughs> Uh, as we record, the Cardinals are back to 500, having briefly touched the the sweet, sweet 
elusive nectar of uh of being an above 500 team uh they lose in the second in a row extra innings game in miami after a um a slight goof them up from uh chris roycroft uh and they fall back to 500 and they are in the middle of game three of the series uh currently losing three Fighting to two. tooth and nail against a pretty bad team. <laughs> I know I, I, I had this, I was remembering earlier in the season when we started uh, like, so I think it was around late April or early May when the team started to play a little bit better. And we had some of those series where it was like, Oh man, it was actually enjoyable baseball again. Yeah, yeah. And then you remember that it was like against really bad teams and, and some of the most like gripping, interesting fun baseball we've had this year has been against the really bad teams right. um you know the, these games against the marlins have been fun i mean they they've been um high scoring and, and a lot of drama a lot of interesting plays a lot of bad pitching um but then you're like oh man it should not be this way this should no. be the games that they that they actually you know run away with but obviously that's been the the story this year the cardinals are seemingly doing really well against the the like upper part of the lower half of the league but as soon as they go into the the very bottom of the the league league, does that make sense yeah the uh like they they struggle to be competitive against the rockies split a series against them struggling to be really competitive against marlins of course we're only two in so they could end up winning three of four and we'd feel better but um still these games have been way too close um but then they also win like five series in a row against some better teams so right Ultimately, 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 uh, it's a 500 baseball team. Um, but at least as of yesterday, uh, we're in sole possession of a wild card slot. So we are looking at a playoff team right now, <laughs> which is more of a damning <laughs> uh, statement on the uh, the rules of baseball <laughs> yeah, or the National League at large. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um but it is what it is. The Cardinals are uh, are uh, in a in a playoff spot and are deep in the hunt for you know making the playoffs. Right. Uh, and you know only six back or so of the Brewers with half a season still to go. So um, you know it's it's competitive. I yep. think right now the Cardinals are expecting to be buyers uh, in the rapidly approaching trade deadline um, but let's get into some of that i mean i think you kind of have to be right like yeah. the cardinals don't really have an option especially if they're going to stick around where they're at i do yeah. wonder just how bad the national league has been in the first half of the season like is it going to normalize in the second half is the national league like in mass going to just start collecting a bunch of wins or is it just the leagues are really in balance this year or the, the league at large like uh like is the AL Central really that good? Is the AL West really that bad? It, like, it, I don't yeah. know. It's it's been a really weird season across the league for for my money. Yeah, well, and you know, I I have said for a while now, I'm I'm fully predicting the the league to move in the direction of getting rid of divisions and going yeah. back to uh, a a two league system where you know something like the top two get a buy next four get in yeah. um you know something like that um and i think the further and further these divisions separate like this the more and more likely you get something like that though the teams at the top of each division are generally you know good teams right now it's like um you know or at least there's no one winning the division winning a division right now with like a 500 record like we might have seen in the past right, right. you know what i mean um so there is some of that being avoided but yeah i think they're uh, the league's in a weird spot right now, but you're also getting um, like the Braves have not been as good as expected. Uh, Acuna's hurt and Riley has struggled and Olsen has struggled. Um, so there's some of that, um, you know, uh, Arizona, who was barely about 500 last year, too. But people thought we're going to be like carry the success from last year into this year has also their right their pretty much dealing doing the same thing the Cardinals have been doing. There's a lot of teams like that that are kind of all in the middle. Well, who would have guessed that uh, Corbin Carroll was just going to be kind of nothing this year? Yeah, I, I feel like that's a big problem there. And they still have a lot of potential. Gabriel Moreno also kind of being nothing over there. Yeah, I, I, it would not surprise me if they 
like teams like that do have a good second half push. Yeah. Or look at the Cubs. Um, you know, they're in last place in the division right now. I know there's not a lot of games in between uh, yeah. second and last, um, but still like, you know, no one saw that coming and it makes you think about um, the, the money they spent to go and get a, what's his face, the, uh, a council, you know? Oh yeah. Um, right. Like our team's going to start second guessing. Yeah. A lot of people saw that as maybe the, the beginning of a new wave of uh, managers and teams spending on them. And then, they go and get him and and you know that team is struggling but again they're only two games back from the cardinals so yeah. like literally at the end of this weekend it could be back to where the cubs are above I, the cardinals i also think while this season is one thing for the cubbies like cardinals fans i'm i'm saying this right now in the middle of june like be ready for the cubbies to spend like 500 million dollars on players this offseason yeah. I, I think that they're going to push in pretty hard i think they were trying to figure out you know is PCA a real guy? Is Sayazuki coming back? Do we want to keep Bellinger? Like, mm-hmm. I think they're trying to figure out their team this year. I have a, a strong feeling that they are going to go and buy and buy and buy this offseason. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. Um, you know, we know they were in on Yamamoto. Uh, and I don't know. The Juan Soto thing of it all is going to be uh, quite interesting to see what that does to the market. Uh, he's got to go to the Yankees, right? Like he's yeah, just going to stay with the Yankees. They're going to give him four hundred million dollars plus, and you know we'll all hate it. And but it, it just feels like the way it's going to go. It certainly seems that way. I'd be very surprised if it doesn't go that way. He, him, and Judge are basically keeping that. They've propelled that team into yeah. uh, so where they are now. Um, um, so. But what I think the the Cubbies you have Shane Bieber, Walker Bueller, and Corbin Burns. Just to name a few uh, starting pitchers that are going to be available at the end of the season, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're going to go go hard and upgrade, and we're all going to be very sad about it in like six months. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Um, boy, would I love the Cardinals to go after Burns, um, but you know, I'll take unlikely Burns, Walker too. Well, yeah, that, yeah, any of those guys would be great. Uh, Cardinals just tied it. So here we are live reporting a uh, a game that all of our listeners will already, already know. happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nothing right, more let's, exciting. Yeah. Let's let's talk about some Cardinal news. Uh, yeah. I think the the most fun thing that happened over the weekend um, was is probably the Pedro Pies uh, story. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you missed it, um, in the the series in Chicago, uh, he had a bit of a power binge uh, for a guy that is not necessarily known for his power at least not yet at the major league level and what really made it fun is that his parents had traveled uh all the way up to chicago to see him play and he has you know two of the the two biggest games of his life there uh and his parents get to watch one of them's on father's day his dad is there and you know i love this stuff this is this is what you want to see as a baseball fan like I, i i love the um, just the celebration of, of dudes making the majors. And then Absolutely, he's yeah. like, w- as fans, uh, especially those of us who are really, really into it, you can kind of get jaded and just look at like results and who this guy is and what kind of results are they going to provide and whatnot. But for each one of these people, it is a culmination of, um, you know, basically their entire lives and their parents' lives likely to get them to that point. And so I think it, it's really awesome. And I love when the broadcast takes some time to celebrate it. And then when it lines up where you get your first career home run, it's kind of a game winning thing. Your parents are there like I, this is the one of the big fun parts of the sport. And uh, it was really cool. Yeah, it's it's a life changing event. It's you know, yeah. I, I think it's still uh, I think only like twenty two thousand people have ever played in the major leagues. You know, it's still yeah. a pretty like that would fill up less like half of bush stadium there's not right. that many guys that have done that um and it's life-changing like he yeah. has hit multiple home runs in a game in wrigley as a cardinal that's incredible yeah um and i'll tell you like he has a little more pedro pajes has a little more thwack in that bat than i had really assumed um those couple of home runs he's had just a couple of sack flies and just like little glimpses here and there i i'm kind of ascribed like he's almost got like a benji molina type vibe to him where it's yeah. like He's obviously a plus defensive catcher. He, he's great at uh, throwing the ball, framing it, everything like that. 
And I'm wondering if maybe he's good for 15 home runs. You know, he might hit 200 or, or less, but if he's got a little, you know, he's a big boy. He, yeah. he throws a little bit of that weight, that rear end into the ball and it gets over the wall. And uh, I don't know, you have a decent little backup catcher. Um, now, how does that make sense when the, with the way the Cardinals are constructed, when Wilson Contreras comes back, you know, who cares? We don't need to worry about that right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking Benji Molina. I'm thinking valuable little mm-hmm. catcher we have here. It's it's kind of fun. Well, as you know, I've been saying for a year and a half now, you got to have three catchers in your roster. Any self-respecting <laughs> big league team carries three catchers. And uh, yeah, we're about to re-enter into the three catcher problem here. Well, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I actually think that might be relevant because how often are you going to want to have Wilson Contreras catching Ryan Helsley fastballs with a broken with forearm a broken that he's wrist, coming back yeah. from. Yeah. Yvonne Herrera has been hitting really well, so you want to keep that bat in the lineup. He's not a tremendous defender. And Pajes is probably the best defender in the organization right now. Um, yeah. So while I hate it, and it's not a great way to construct your team, and the team's bench already doesn't make sense, and the way they deploy it doesn't always make sense, and Matt Carpenter's starting too often, <laughs> um, that seems like a likely scenario right now. I don't know. It wouldn't totally shock me. Got a lot of response to me calling Matt Carpenter an emotional support player. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I, uh, I do, I don't know. Is, is Yvonne our best trade chip right now? Is he the, wow. big, is he the big piece that gets moved at the deadline for, for more pitching or something like that? I think, no, I think you probably just keep riding these three and, and maybe someone ends up back at uh AAA for a little while as as the roster sorts itself out. But um, yeah, there, I don't know. It's an interesting you know, problem to have. That is interesting. And you know the the Yankees have a bit of a problem at catcher right now. Like, are you sold on Austin Wells? I don't know. Did you see Jose Trevino gave up nine stolen bases uh, <laughs> over the weekend? Yeah, in one game. Yeah the the Red Sox were running all over him. That's really bad. Um, you know, Philly, they have JT Real Muto is currently injured. When's he going to come back? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think any other. No, Seattle, they're good. Houston, they're good. Big Minnesota, Minnesota mm-hmm. could use the catcher. There are some teams out there um, yeah. that the Cardinals can trade. I think that's interesting. I do think, um, like, what is Ivan Herrera's value in MLB right now? I don't, like, are you giving up a real arm to get Ivan Herrera? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, yeah. the dude can hit, you know, we've seen, a, we've seen maybe a little bit of lack of power, but he's making up for it with average on base and a little bit of speed. Maybe he's been stealing yeah. bases now, you know, um, and he's still very young. An arm what the Cardinals need right now, though. Is well, that, I with, would argue the problem is the offense still. <laughs> I think it's kind of a little bit of all of it, right? Like the team kind of stinks. <laughs> yeah, well, they're a 500 team. Like, yeah they have some really good stuff and they have some real black holes in the lineup and, uh, and in the rotation. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, we don't know anything else yet. Likely more information will come out by time this comes out. Uh, but what the F's up with Kyle Gibson, uh, yeah. back stiffness. Okay. That could be a uh, skip to start. It could be way more, you know, and, for a team that has been struggling for that fifth starter spot already, if you take out Kyle Gibson, who, you know, he's been he's been Kyle Gibson, he's been what he was hired for. Um, he's been actually going pretty deep, unlike Lance Lynn. You're it, it, the rotation is now a it's a problem, right? It's already kind of been a problem, and now yeah. it's a big problem if Gibson is gone, um, even for a little bit of time. So I think, yeah, I think you need a starter. I think you could use bullpen and you could use offense. I really, I think it's you're shopping for whatever the best available, you know, whatever yeah. you can get. Um, I, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit last week. Miami is a team that's clearly selling. Uh, I, I, I was shouting, uh, that the Cardinals should be try, trading for Brian De La Cruz who hit a, mm-hmm. a couple of jacks yeah. off the Cardinals so far in this series, which has been a nice little, uh, sales job. You know, a lot of people are talking about Jesus Luzardo being available and he's had a down year. I wonder how much that actually hurts his uh, trade chip ability. Um, can he be gotten for 
a little bit less than we originally thought. That would be pretty interesting. Like trade chip ability. Well, he I, himself is uh, is dealing with a little back thing right now too. I would so. take the bounce back. Like I, I would bet on the uh, the ability for him to bounce back, and especially being with a club that isn't you know complete yeah. trash. Uh, not that the Cardinals are that much better, but uh, isn't you know in the basement of the AL or uh, NL East. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be worth trying. He's only 26. I mean, he's, well, I, I'm personally a, a big child. fan of, of Jesus lizard. Um, but you know, is, is trading for a, uh, maybe injured down year starter, uh, what the Cardinals are looking for right now. That feels more like an off season thing where you're I don't, trying to, that's kind of them. Mo's bread and butter though. He's not going True. for the, for the top shelf type of guy. Like yeah. almost ever. No, definitely um, mid season. He's not doing that. No. No, we all know it's going to, like you said it last week. It's, what is this year's John Lester? Yeah. Who is it? Um, and that that's who we're going to get. I, I still, I know I, I, I shouted about this for months last year. I'll, I'll probably start this up again. I'll just start it right now. Um, the Mariners offense is mm-hmm. lackluster. They have six good starters plus. Yeah. Uh, with Brian Wu coming back and, and being healthy and extremely effective, do they move a Bryce Miller uh, to try to bolster that offense? It doesn't seem that way, um, but they could easily do that, bring back up Emerson Hancock and, and really not skip a beat and yeah. maybe get their offense going a little bit more because they do have one of the worst offenses in baseball right now. Um, but, you know... That is now a type of move that we almost never see Mo do, right? You're talking uh, uh, the cost of a guy like that is probably starting at like a Teen Kent's. And I know you said they're looking for offense, so maybe it's more like a Nolan Gorman um, and a Teen Kent's or something like that. Like that's going to be a crazy high cost that I think it's very unlikely we see the Cardinals do. Probably. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, But hey, on the flip side, I... we talked about him last week and it, it has continued. So let's give our, let's give some flowers. Let's give some love to miles. Michaelis. Wow. Cowboy Cowboys back. <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's no way like he's just been fantastic. Um, he flipped a switch and he's been the Cardinals best player over the last month. Um, yeah. Maybe longer than that at this point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe six weeks. He has just been lights out. Um, look, I'm looking his, Batting average allowed over the last five games is 176 with a 315 slug allowed. Like he's just been nails. Um, yeah. And he's kind of doing it that old school Miles Michaelis way. He's not really striking anybody out. Uh, he's getting weak contacts. Um, his, I will say his just pure eyeball test, his pitches look sharper. He looks better. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is clear to me why this is happening. We talked about the usage of the high sinker. Um, that's obviously been great. We've talked about how good his slider is one of the best in baseball. Um, he's been leaning on that. It's, it's been all good news. So yeah, love me some miles right now. Um, yeah, sorry. A little distracted. Arenado just got hit in the chest and is down on the ground. Nate, uh, not, you know what? Arenado, he's, he's a thousand miles away from, I'm right in front of your face. Why don't you just focus (laughs) on me for one second? You know what? That's good feedback. Thanks, Hambone. Um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, in a time where the Cardinals have needed stability from the rotation, uh, Miles Michaelis has absolutely been there. And if you remember our, our like surprising fact from the off season was that uh, over the last three years, Miles Michaelis has been the 19th best pitcher in all of baseball. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, from 2019 to 20 or from 2020 through the 2023 season, he was the 19th best from a fan graphs war perspective. And I think that's, you know, it, it's from, this he goes on these streaks right where he's just right he's really really good um but he does sort of have a tightrope walk style you know he has more velocity than you might think so he can burn some guys but for the most part he's just really trying to trick them and get bad contact and uh it it's kind of streaky kind of a streaky approach but right now it's been really really good and the cardinals have absolutely needed it yeah, we love a miles. Um, I, I was trying to look up that stat in real time and it, I'm, I'm struggling, but uh, just know that uh, he good. He been good. Uh, we like miles. Thank you, miles. Yeah. 
Um, so let's, you mentioned it a little bit. You said the Cardinals could use some offense. Let's talk about the offense a little bit. It has cooled down here in, uh, in June. Um, how do you want to, how do you want to approach this? What do you want to talk about specifically with the offense? Well, I, you know, as, as I was prepping for the show, I was kind of looking for something to either be excited about or complain about or whatever. And so I was looking at the Cardinals performance in the month of June, uh, which we are most of the way through at this point. And Nathan, would it surprise you to hear that the only players who are hitting have a oh, WRC plus above 100 are Ivan Herrera and Biscuit Burleson? Mm. Um, everybody else, I think Mason Wynn had a 98 WRC plus, so essentially league average for yeah. this conversation. Um, but everyone else has been below and some well below. Yeah. Uh, the offense that had really picked up last month has kind of cratered this month. I don't think that you can really blame the competition for that. Um, but it's kind no. of like, you know, we're halfway through the season or about halfway. We're, we're at 70 games right now. Um, so we're quickly approaching halfway. Mm -hmm. And when do you just say that this team's offense isn't so good? Um, I think we've kind of been saying that for like a month now, right? Uh, there's obviously flashes. Um, Nolan Gorman might be the streakiest player. Like, we've ever had yeah you know he's either absolutely dominant or striking out uh in an absurd amount of times and so when we, we we i know he had a home run today which is cool um but when he's off he's like deeply off and uh no one else has really been able to get it going even burleson like i i really you know it's been really fun to see biscuit um you know with his, his breakout of sorts but he still has a sub 800 OPS too, right. you know, it's not like he's been tearing the cover off the ball. There's really no one on the team that has been consistent the entire year, except for maybe Mason Wynn. Um, but again, that's a sort of a different offensive profile too. Yeah. And it's, you know, if, if the offense is going to be this way, the Cardinals are weirdly being buoyed by their odd pitching that is yeah. working so far and the defense is inconsistent. It's like, well, of course this is a 500 team. Honestly, they're lucky to be a 500 team. They, if you look at their Pythagorean uh, record, <laughs> and if you look at a bunch of underlying stats, they yeah. should probably be worse than they are. Um, which, you know, don't tell the Ali Marmol uh, haters that, you know, he might be uh, propping this team up slightly, you know, depending on how much you believe on that and the manager's ability to affect the game. But like yeah. this team isn't very good. And they kind of have proved that out over half a season. Now, baseball's stupid, and it can <clears throat> play out this way for 70 games and then totally flip around for the remaining 90 games. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be the wildest thing we've ever seen. But it's, you know, well, let's talk about Goldie and, and Nato really quick. And uh, by the way, Nato was taken out of the game after being hit in the chest. So I hope he's OK. Yeah, yeah um, looked pretty bad. I'm a little worried about a, uh, a broken rib right now. That being said, Nate, Nolan Arenado is on pace for a two F war season, which puts him dead league average. Um, so while I don't want Nolan being hurt uh, because I have empathy in my heart and I don't want any of my homies being hurt, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, does Brendan Donovan put up a two war season at third base? Probably. Probably. Um, is his offense a little more consistent? Maybe. Is his defense worse? Probably. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a cannon for an arm. He gets on base. Like, Nolan Arenado has kind of been nothing. And again, I think he's capable of having a great second half and turning things around because he has Nolan Arenado. But the fact remains that he's on. he's got .9 war, F4 right now. He's on pace for two. It's bad. It's, it's not yeah. what you need from a guy that you're paying, what, $36 million a year. And I don't even really care about the money part of it. It's just the the Nolan Arenado of it all, the everyday at bats of it all, the right. batting fourth, fifth or sixth or whatever he's batting regularly. It's, it's a, it's a lack of production from somebody who should be an all-star candidate. Yeah. You expect yeah. to be an all-star candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, top to bottom. And the reality is like, I, I think this is it. This is the team, you know, this is the team that's either going to win it or lose it. And, uh, I know a lot of people out there are loving themselves a Luis Robert and Garrett Crochet trade or something like that, but I LOL. just I just don't see it happening. That shit ain't happening. Let me just say <laughs> it ain't happening. Louis, no, neither of those players will be a Cardinal. That is not going to happen. Yeah, erase um, that from your mind. 
but you know, they are at 500 and, um, if you can get a little bit more consistency out of some of these guys, um, you know, Yvonne, Nolan, Gorman, Mason, Wynn, um, you know, new bar comes back. Edmund, remember that guy? He's yeah. coming back soon. Yeah. Um, you know, the path to being anything better than a 500 team is through those guys. In my opinion, I think we've got to stop waiting for some of these more veteran players to return to their former glory. Yeah. And we need to start looking to uh, when are these younger guys going to, um, find that consistency and, yeah. and propel this team because that's the so, future of this team. I anyway, like that's what yeah. we, we both need it for this year. And we also need it for next year and the next and the next and the next. I want to talk about Edmund, but for, before we move on from the complaining about the old players, Paul Goldschmidt has a expected weighted on base average of 325 after obviously 70 games played this season, 50 points below his career average. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, he is capable of turning it on. He is capable of, of getting those get, finding those 50 points going on a run. He can, he's a guy that can hit 10 home runs in a month yep. um, or more. But I think like you're saying a, a sobering message on the pod today, Nathan, it's, wow. it might not be coming. Yeah, and Louis Robert jr. Is not coming through that hallway <laughs> either. So we got to figure this out. Um, uh, Jordan yeah, Walker it's, it's, started to pick it up at triple a a little bit. So Jordan Skywalker has hit a yeah. couple of bombs. Mason Wynn is good. Yeah. Um, but you, but you brought up a name that I think we do need to talk about. Tommy Edmond is starting to play major league baseball, minor league baseball. I, I should say, what is the move you make when Tommy Edmond comes back? Is he starting your starting center fielder day one? Um, and, and who gets bounced off the 26 man? Hmm. Um, yeah, starting center does make sense. My initial thought had been a uh, thanks for your time, Brandon Crawford. Love you. Um, he's the one out, and Tommy's now your backup shortstop and auxiliary outfielder while he gets back into uh, you know, back into form, and we see what version of Tommy we're gonna get in the regular season. I'm a little hesitant to just plug him in as like the full starting, you know, starter going forward. But also it's not like, you know, it's not like there's anyone who's been running away with the job that will, uh, <laughs> that will stop that. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think it's complicated because I think, uh, I am of the opinion that while I complain about Tommy Edmonds starting in the outfielder, I think he's a better outfielder than Brendan Donovan. Obviously he yeah. can play center. Brendan Donovan cannot, but then you have your, your center field options are Dylan Carlson, Michael Ciani, and Tommy Edmond. Um, not, not a lot of offensive upside there. There was right. some defense there. I think, you know, who has the deepest or who has the highest ceiling? Dylan Carlson. Uh, but Michael Ciani is probably the best defensive center fielder on the roster. So, yeah. And what does that look like? How about that um, Jackie hit? You know, we've been seeing a little bit of reduction from him over the last sure. week or so. Uh, yeah, and I think Michael Ciani is a type of player that good teams should have on them. I yeah. don't think he should be starting four or five times a week. Uh, mm. But he is a, a role player. He can drop down a bunt, great defender, and he'll pop one over the wall every once in a while. And he might be the second fastest player on the team to Mason win. When he's, he's up there. Yeah, probably. Um, but the team is just organized in a weird way. You have Brandon Crawford, Jose Fermin, and... Brendan Donovan all kind of without a real position, but taking up spots on the roster and, you know, and Matt Carpenter, but I know he's filling a slightly different role than those just guys. Just DHing. Yeah. Like, yeah. do you like, does this team need Matt Carpenter, Jose Fermin and Brandon Crawford all on the same roster? The it, move it's, they probably do is Fermin goes. Yeah. Um, I think that's, just from a logistical standpoint, it makes more sense. But they need a right-handed bat more than they need a left-handed bat right now. Yeah. So, and they're not going to drop Carpenter. Let's just, I think we should drop that notion. He, I think he will be on the roster all year. I, I don't think there's any question about Certainly that. Certainly seems that way. Yeah. yeah. I think we said that at the beginning of the year. He's either going to self-eject 
or he's going to yeah. be here the rest of the year. It and he's hitting just well enough to not self deject. So he, yeah. he did, when he had two hits today, I think already, um, that's not going to happen. So it's looking good. Salt and pepper beard. Yeah. We love I, it. I think the mustache would go a long way right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's this roster's kind of poo poo. I don't know. What do you do with it? <laughs> like, what what do you do? It's poo poo. And <laughs> it's a, we got ourselves a poo poo roster. What do you do? Doo doo. It's poo poo. It's doo doo. It's poo poo. I mean, I, I got nothing for you, dude. Like, what what am I supposed to say here? Uh, I, I I can't. None of those outfielders, except for Burley, I, I'm fighting for time right now. They need to. Yeah. He needs to be in the lineup. And then your infield options, like. You have to start Mason Wynn and Nolan Gorman every day. You yeah. have to start the corner guys every day. So everybody else is kind of like superfluous. Sur- per- superfluous. Sup- superfluous. There you go. You got there. Um, I suspect that given the state of the team, uh, assuming full health, we're going to see Tommy Edmond in the lineup uh, most days because yeah. they're looking. They're going to be looking for anything they can get, and there have been times where Tommy Edmond has been a very competent offensive player. Most of his value has come from defense. Um, but again, there is there is that, or at least there has been some offensive upside at yeah. times in his career. And so we'll see if maybe he gets, if he can come back and provide that. He could steal a bag with the yeah. best of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So he is kind of in between like a, I'm thinking upside here. He is kind of in between like Carlson and Siani. So it seems like a safer place. That said, it does feel unfair to Tommy Edmond, who has a six war season in the major leagues, yeah. which uh, Dylan has never come even close to. Right. So it feels a little unfair to say that Carlson has a higher upside than, than uh, Edmund when Edmund has shown his upside is six war, which is, I mean, incredible, right? That is, uh, past all-star and you know really approaching like lower end of mvp val- balloting when you get to six right. war um but we haven't seen that for a little while and he gets there mostly through defense mm-hmm. and that's we're not really suffering for center field defense right now we're not really suffering from second base defense i know C- gorman could be better but uh Mazalek said even in the in the uh the q a that we were at he's like when your second baseman is going to hit 35 bombs, you, uh, you know, you kind of are okay with a few, uh, defensive mistakes. Yeah. And, and I, I fully agree with that. Yeah. It's just yeah. like the team. I, I mean, we complain about this every, at this time of year, every year, the Cardinals need to make decisions, decide on players, trade the players they don't want and upgrade yeah. the roster. And they just can't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like it's another Tommy thing. Edmund and Dylan Carlson should not be on the same team. It doesn't make, we don't need that. Yeah. And Michael Ciani, I'll throw him in there too. Yeah. The problem is I've been seeing a lot of, um, uh, you know, trade projections and whatnot. If you're trading Dylan Carlson right now, you're basically dumping him. You know, we as fans, I value our players more than anyone else will. That is, that is just how fan bases work. You know, like every fan base values their own players more than another team will. But I've seen some, projected trade offers going around online that I'm just like, what do you think another team sees in Dylan Carlson right now? Like who's spending top capital on him? Every team has a yep. Dylan Carlson in their minors right now. You know, yeah. no, no Cardinals fan wants to hear this right now, but if their Cardinals were going to make a trade, it would probably include, uh, Brendan Donovan or yeah. Alec Burleson or Jordan Walker, you know, like, I could see a world where if the car, if the Cardinals truly wanted to make a, a big move, yeah, like that's the guy you trade, but even his value is down right now. They you just know, some, never trade away that high of a prospect. Like no. the last time it happened was Brett Wallace, which was a good call. Yeah. Um, but that was 2006, Eight, seven, I think thunder thighs, uh, Brett Wallace. Yeah. No, it might've been 2009. It was 2009. I think that was yeah. holidays first year with us. Um. Yeah. Anyway, and that was a different time in baseball too, where right. you had to trade a top prospect at the mid to get a to get a two month rental. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I this this has become a little bit of a gloomier episode than I expected it to be because we are 
the Cardinals are technically in a playoff spot right now. So, yay. Uh, yay. <laughs> and hey, once you get in those playoffs, you never know. You know what I mean? Look at the Diamondbacks uh, last year. Yeah, I think I have a pretty good feeling of what would happen to the Cardinals if they get in there. <laughs> but yeah, sure. All right. What else Cardinals do you want to talk about before we, we move on? Um, do I have anything nice? Oh, yeah, I got some nice stuff to talk about. Let's talk about Wilson Contreras has actually played in a triple A game. He got yes. a hit. Um, he is working his way back. I assume he'll be back extremely quickly because um, the guy's a psycho and healed insanely fast from a broken arm. I don't know how he did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like he has like healing factor Wolverine style. It, it was Could a be. very impressive turnaround. He might have uh, adamantium bones. Wow. <laughs> um, is it adamantium? Yep, it is. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Not one. unobtainium like in uh, Avatar. Uh, is that Avatar? Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen Avatar. I, what? I know. Yeah. You know, I, it's like. They it's made like those... $4 billion. Everybody in the world saw them. What? You think you're too good? Yeah, that's what it is. I'm like, I'm too good for that. Idiot. Uh, No, you know, it's one of those things you miss it in theaters. And then I'm like, well, I don't know. Until Avatar 2, Avatar 1 was like the most memory hold blockbuster of all time. Like nobody talked about, oh, man, you got to see Avatar. You know, it's because just like everyone saw it. It made two billion dollars. Yeah, but that's just because James Cameron, that coward James Cameron made it. And he he, he draws, you know, Jimmy C. Don't miss. That's what we say <laughs> in my house. <laughs> um, I think I'm sure I told you about this, but I saw Avatar 2. Uh, 1.5 times in 40x and it was horrible yeah yeah, um, yeah. it's like i i went and saw uh this is this is way back but i saw lord of the rings return of the king three times in theaters yeah and uh even one is enough the last like hour and 20 minutes of that movie is just everyone saying bye to each other yeah and uh the by that third time i'm like this sucks why am i why am i still here <laughs> Uh, I made my dad uh, go to that movie with me. And I, yeah, that last hour, he was like pinching me in the arm. But I love it. It's great. Um, happy Father's Day. Oh, whatever. Um, okay. Some other interesting news on the injury front is Steven Matz uh, mm. has been progressing in the minors. And he's being stretched out as a starter, which is curious. Yeah. Um, that, but he's thrown six and two thirds innings. Not a single earned run yet, and has struck out ten guys. So he's looking good against obviously lesser competition in Double A and Triple A. But <laughs> I think the more important part of this is that this is clearly to me signaling that he is yeah. going to be a starter when he rejoins the big league club. Yeah. Um, your thoughts, Nathan? Um, I. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck on. Uh, don't go breaking my heart. You know what I mean. Don't go um, breaking my heart. I, uh, I have been. I couldn't if I tried. Uh, well, Matt, you could. And you've tried. Because yep. I, I don't think that I've been higher on anyone in the starting rotation over and over and over yep. than Steven Matz. I've been saying Matz is, Matz is the dude. Matz has the highest upside of any of our guys. And, uh, you know, time after time. I'm going from don't break my heart to time after time here. Uh, he has time. broken my heart. <laughs> yeah, it just it's been over and over and over, you know, um, and obviously I still think he has that high upside. I'm just not ready to to get the hype machine going just yet. Um, I need to see the health and I need to see the consistency uh, before I get super excited. Can he do it? Yes, I think so. Um does it make sense that they're going to try yet again at the rotation given the current circumstances? Yes, absolutely. It makes sense. Uh, am Does I, it? well, uh, we don't know about Kyle Gibson now, but if the Cardinals are down to just Lance Lynn, Sonny Gray and miles Michaelis, like, yeah, it, it makes sense. You have to, I, I think we said last week, um, you know, the, I think the, the ideal spot for him at this point is in the bullpen. Um, but, what do you want? You want more Palante? You want more Liberator? Like, what are we? What are we doing here? Who else is going to get a, a start? At least Matt's has done it before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he has physically done it before. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think Sam Reverse is an interesting name. I know we're complaining about his consistency. I think Adam Klofenstein is interesting. 
Uh, Liberator is interesting. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm feeling down on this move. Yeah, I, I guess it's just in general. Like, it, it. How 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 many times do you have to try something and it fail for you to finally agree that it's failing? And why not have the guy do the thing that he's exceeded at yeah. in a Cardinals uniform? And he has been a lights out reliever several times. Um, and we need that too. Um, yeah. You know, Kyle um, Leahy and, and Chris Roycroft are, and John King are getting innings that are too important. Um, so why not give those to Matt's where he has actually been effective? Maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe he'll find it again. Um, but I feel like we're insane just trying it over and over yeah. again. And, and he's showing us that it's either he's going to get hurt or he's going to suck. And <laughs> Maybe this is the time, Hambone. This is it. Uh, or it's time for them to start experimenting with what I've been calling for years now. We're doing bullpen starts every day, um, and you're just stacking two or three inning outings over and over and over. We're just rotating between all these guys. Other yeah, than- I think you know the bullpen could totally handle that when the Cardinals mm-hmm. said that they didn't want to have Helsley uh, and, and uh, Romero and... Uh, 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 um, Kittredge. Kittredge pitch at all this series. Yeah, they could definitely just ride those guys even harder mm-hmm. for the remainder of the they season. They throw That's more. Very yeah. smart of you. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. Dumbass. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess this maybe we did. Let's okay. Let's stop this segment. This uh, we're, we're too doom and gloom on the Cardinals right now. Yeah. We're yeah. 500. Let's go. This I is- know. And it's a tie game. The Cardinals. Unless they walk it off, uh, which we'll be bringing to you live on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> um, I did the get a Cardinal- status update. Uh, Nolan Arenado's lung fell out of his mouth after being hit in the chest. Oh, so. No, I thought yeah. I saw that on the on the on the ground there in the yeah. dirt, but I I did I gotta say I didn't think it was his lung. I thought it was a whoopee cushion, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. It was making a farting noise. <laughs> so I also I definitely didn't think it was a lung. Uh, I, yeah. I don't want to think about that anymore, but I bet a lung could sound like a whoopee cushion because of, you know, it's the way that it's made in the air. Yeah. I bet because of the way it's made in the air, a lung could sound like a whoopee cushion. (laughs) Move on. (laughs) All right. We're going to talk about the upcoming series and some other stuff, but before we do, we want to remind everyone that this show (laughs) is supported by our listeners on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com slash talking about birds if you enjoy the show and, <laughs> for whatever reason and <laughs> uh, and want to support the time and effort that we put into bringing it to you every single week uh, yeah. can consider joining the patreon patreon.com slash talking about birds um, we've got uh, various rewards at different levels and um, but anyone who subscribes at any level gets access to our uh, private discord server. You know it, you've heard it, you love it. It's the bird scored. Um, despite the the ups and downs of the season, um, it's been a great place to be. Uh, a lot of really cool fellow listeners and people in the community. Um, and uh, it's become sort of my go-to place to talk about the Cardinals in a social media capacity. Um, more so than any of the other ones uh, that it won't even bother naming um, that are mostly toxic and frustrating. Um, the bird's gourd is not uh, devoid of scrutiny uh, of the Cardinals and whatnot, but it is at least a place or where us. you'll find, or yeah, uh, um, you'll find good conversation though. And people that will actually talk to you and not just, uh, you know, do the Twitter thing. Um, I want to shout out new patron, Christopher. Thanks, Christopher, for joining. We really appreciate it. Tweet, tweet. Um, Yep, tweet, tweet. So again, patreon.com. So I was talking about birds. You also get access to early episodes, usually um, the day before. uh, And subscribers at any of the higher tiers get a free shirt from our uh, awesome shirt catalog. Um, If you can't join the bird scored we understand uh, but we would appreciate if you take a little bit of time to leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform it really does help um hambone where else can people find us online and support find us on all those toxic uh websites <laughs> Nate was referencing on twitter we are at talk about birds on instagram we're at talking about birds 
Uh, we're on TikTok. We got a TikTok. The show is available to listen to on YouTube and Spotify. If you prefer to listen there, uh, you can email us things, whatever you got to talk about birds at gmail.com. You can find all of that. The podcast, T-shirts, Patreon, everything at talkingaboutbirds.com. And of course, you can call us and leave a voicemail or send us a text message to 848-48-BIRDS. That's 848-482-4737. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. We appreciate it. Um, All right. So the Cardinals have a a couple interesting series coming up. Uh, First of all, we're playing the Giants. Um, And the most notable thing about this series, of course, is the first game Thursday is going to be at Rickwood Field. Yeah. A very famous um, historical baseball field. I think I saw something like 17 percent of all Hall of Famers played a game at this field. Um, And jumping a little bit to the league news segment, this game is going to be all the more um, relevant and I think important because it is essentially becoming a bit of a wake for Willie Mays, who passed yeah. away yesterday. Um, one of the greatest of all time. Some would say the greatest of all time. I think um, I'm one of those people. I, I might be too. You know, I, it's such an impossible thing to to really define. But like, I might also agree that Willie Mays is the best baseball player of all time. Yeah. He was 93, passed away. Right. Awesome dude. Um, you know, I heard someone saying like, it's hard to say he was a better guy off the field than on the field because he might have been the best of all time on the field. <laughs> yeah. um, but obviously off the field, he was an incredible guy too. Um, and this game, I think, is going to uh, serve again as like a, as a, a bonus memorial to Willie Mays. Um, and on the field, the Giants are kind of what they've been the last couple of years. Um, kind of similar range as the Cardinals. You know, they've got some upside. They've They also can't really break through um what do you what are you seeing from the giants right now yeah kind of a weird team um you know they had a lot of action over the offseason they brought in solaire uh jung hu lee uh matt chapman and those have mostly panned out although jung hu lee is going to be out for the remainder of the season i think he had a dislocated his shoulder um so that's too bad um but the guys that they did sign have been pretty solid uh uh, Ramos, uh, kind of this, this guy who's come out of nowhere has, I think he led the league in WRC plus over the last month and a half. Yeah. Helio, uh, Helio Ramos. Ramos, Ramos. He was a, he was a pretty well-regarded prospect going into last year, made his debut and kind of floundered. So he, he fell off like yeah. most people's list. So it's not in, it, it's more like post hype at this point, all in a very short amount of time. So it's not completely out of nowhere, but I don't think anyone expected this degree of, no. Uh, of mashing. Yeah, he, he's been fantastic. Um, I, I'll also, I'll call out Patrick Bailey. I think one of the more underrated players in baseball right now, arguably the best defensive catcher in baseball. Um, and also has a really solid bat, takes a good amount of walks, just a, a really good player and has the fastest pop time in MLB. So careful running on him. Um, and then when you go to the pitching side, um, Kyle Harrison and Blake Snell are currently on the IL, uh, which is two large hits for their team. Um, but Logan Webb and we all know Jordan Hicks, uh, uh, too well, um, have mm-hmm. been great. Um, and they are two, they're, they're weirdly similar. Jordan Hicks, a little better velo, but both power sinker guys. Um, and you know, Logan Webb, arguably one of the better pitchers, starting pitchers in baseball, even though he's not that like strikeout machine. Just yeah. super consistent, heavy ground ball guy. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, they're, they're a solid, if not spectacular team. Logan Webb is one of those guys that I keep expecting for it to just sort of stop working. Um, and just year after year, he does it. I don't think it's going to. I think he's yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Cardinals have lost in the bottom of the ninth on uh, it's hard to say if he would have been able to make the play in the first place, but very likely it looks like they lost on an error by Alec Burleson in right field. Um, Nate, we're, we're not talking about, we're, we're being happy for the rest of the show. Yeah, we are. We are. 
Uh, the Cub- the Cardinals won the series in Chicago. So how <laughs> awesome was that? There that we was go. Great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So uh, the I, I'm looking forward to the series against the the Giants. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, they're they're a beatable team. Uh, you know, hopefully. Um, but the Rickwood game, I think, is going to be a really cool, really cool thing. Yeah. Um, after that, we've got three games against the Braves in Bush. Yeah. So we had said, uh, you know, there's like a 40 game stretch where only, I think, like three or six of the games are against teams above 500. This is one of those stretches. Uh, the Braves have struggled compared to expectations this year. Um, and I think that's mostly because of Spencer Strider pitched like nine innings this year. Yeah. And Acuna Jr. is again out for the year. Um, and then Riley has had a slow start, though he's been heating up lately. Matt Olson had a slow start, though he's been heating up lately. And Albies has had a slow start as well. So um, I think we all know the Braves. We know how good they are, or at least how good they can be. Um, and despite all of these injuries, all of this, they are still, uh, you know, what, 10 games above 500 yeah. and can beat you in a lot of different ways. Um, but what, what are you seeing out of the Braves right now? Yeah. I mean, everything you said, you know, they, they are definitely a top heavy team. Like, uh, as good as the Braves are, they do lack depth outside of those star players. That being said, they're almost all star players, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but after that first group, you, you really don't have much to talk about. I think what's really interesting is that the Braves made two interesting uh, tra- a, a trade and a, a signing uh, this offseason. They traded for Chris Sale, who has refound his Cy Young form. He has been absolutely yes. dominant since coming over. Um, he has a 235 FIP. He's striking out over 10 per nine and walking under two per nine. He's just been amazing. And then Reynaldo Lopez, who has converted from, he was a starter who was converted to a relief pitcher who is now back to starting age 30 season. And he has been nothing but fantastic. He has a one, six, nine ERA striking everybody out. He's been arguably the best pitcher, um, you know, uh, stats wise uh, uh, for the Braves. Although if you look at the underlying numbers, Chris sale has just been better, a tick better. Um, but their pitching is great. I'm not, I didn't even mention Max Freed, who mm-hmm. is another perennial all-star level starting pitcher, and Charlie Morton, Steady Eddie. Like they, they have a great rotation. Um, their bullpen probably they need to augment. They probably need to get another guy or two. But they have Raciel uh, Raciel Iglesias closing out games. He's pretty good too. Power sinker type closer. Um, yeah, the Braves are great. Yeah. Well, they were. Some would say they were the best team going into the season. Yeah, obviously, yeah. there's arguments there, and and though they've been hit in a lot of different ways, like the core, the you, you, you know, if you're the best team in baseball, you can usually withstand a few major hits and still be pretty damn good. So ah. this will be a real challenge. It's at home, which is nice. Yeah, um, but yeah, this is going to be a tough series. It would not surprise me if Matt Olson hits 30 bombs uh, for the remainder of the season. Like yeah. he is, he is that level of player in my eyes. Um, Austin Riley, uh, he's a guy that could hit 20 bombs for the remainder of the season. They're getting positive play out of Jared Kelnick. Um, and yeah, uh, which is kind of the least surprising thing. Like when they traded for him, it's just like, "Ah, damn it. Of course. Yeah. He's going to be good. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure Cardinals fans will hate to hear this, but Marcelo Zuna having an all-star season, just, uh, hitting already 20 bombs, hitting over 300, over 900. Oh yeah. He, He's doing everything but running, and that's yep. not super surprising. Yeah, so they're they're still a good team, um, and I expect them to only get better, uh, and, and maybe quickly. Hopefully, not too quickly, though. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll have a should be an interesting week of games. Um, let's go into league news. All right. Well, yeah, Nate already brought it up. Uh, I, I did want to talk about uh, Willie Mays just a little bit more. As I said, uh, maybe my choice for best baseball player of all time. Um, he obviously, uh, passed away at the age of 93. Um, and it was reported that, you know, apparently that was a, a peaceful passing, you know, hopefully, you know, no, no, no pain. Um, but Willie Mays, I, I just wanted to read off a couple of stats and, uh, or facts, I guess, about Willie Mays before we move on. Uh, he led the league in war 10 times in his career, which is amazing. 
Yep. He made 24 all-star games. He was the first player in MLB history to join the 3030 club. He invented the 3030 club, cool. uh, which is so cool. And he accumulated 6,066 total bases. He is third of all time. And yeah, how yeah. metal is that? <laughs> Super metal. <laughs> um, and like, I was just looking it up over, there's like so many stories and so many amazing stats. I just kind of cherry picked a couple. Um, I was reading, uh, Bob Kendrick, the, uh, 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 the uh, curator of the Negro league hall of fame in Kansas city was, uh, relaying some stories about, uh, a 16 and 17 year old Willie Mays playing in the Negro leagues, obviously much younger than everybody and, and dazzling people making his, his plays like effortless robbing home runs, um, against players, you know, almost twice his age. Yeah. Um, uh, just, yeah. One of the best of all time. Um, and, and <laughs> there's probably a more normal way to bring this up. Dude was Jack. He was just out of his mind. <laughs> great shape. Like, I don't think he ever picked up a way. He was just a guy that was born mm-hmm. to play baseball and was just a, a physical freak. Um, and yeah, one of the best to ever, maybe the best to ever do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, he was probably, I don't know what the programming plan for the Rickwood game was going to be. I assume he was likely going to be featured in it already. Um, but now this is likely going to basically just be a, a Willie Mays tribute yeah. evening. Uh, Especially, and I think that's yeah, great. The Giants obviously being a part of it as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's super cool. Like yeah. I, I'm not happy that he passed away obviously, but the timing is pretty wild. Um, so agreed. Um, all right. And I want to round out league news with a couple of injury updates. Uh, big ones. Mookie Betts will be out for a while after breaking his hand on a hit by pitch. Uh, just bad for baseball. Um, yeah, it's bad for me. I'm going to the Dodgers Rockies game tonight, so I don't get to see Mookie Betts play. So bad. You missed the one last night. Uh, the like 11 to nine. Did you see yeah. that? The, the, yeah. the, I don't even think it was that bad of a call, though. I understand why people were mad about it. The the missed swing that turned into the three run yeah. bomb and Jake Cave just screaming in the outfield, screaming at the home plate umpire from center field, which yeah. is uh, pretty hilarious. Or maybe it's right field. I don't, I don't know where uh, he plays, I think but he's he's been their left fielder mostly. But I don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, welcome to Rockies baseball, Jake Cave and the rest of the world. That's just how it goes here. Uh, I've seen yeah. a lot of games given up in the ninth inning. Um, and the Dodgers are good and don't pitch Otani to hit like an Otani. almost 500 foot home run. I do get to watch Otani in person tonight. I do. I'm hoping I get to see a bomb. That would be exciting, yeah. but, uh, Mookie's out. Um, the Dodgers will be fine, but you know, yeah, one of, it's a bummer. one of the greats. Who is doesn't for love? A while. Everyone loves Mookie. Yeah. Um, and it just sucks to get hit in the hand. Like every injury is unique and sucks in a different way, but it always feels like particularly bad when it's a hit by pitch like Where that. that pad where that back of the hand pad. It does, it's crazy to me that not every player wears that. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, if I were up there, I'd be in a fucking suit of armor. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> clank, yeah. clank, clank, Kevlar clank. Vest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but judge got hit in the hand too, but he seems to have avoided any major injury. And I think he has the pad. Yeah, well, you know, Judge's hand and Mookie Betts hand is, uh, you know, when a baseball is <laughs> colliding with them, two very different things there, I <laughs> yeah. think, you know. Uh, Mookie, a slight man. Aaron Judge, the largest human that's ever existed. Uh-huh. Makes sense to me. Um, speaking of those Yankees and health, uh, Garrett Cole is set to make his season debut He's against the back. O's this week, um, which is kind today. of amazing. Yeah. I thought he was going to get surgery. Uh, it's today. Sorry. Uh, Wednesday. So Garrett Cole is back. Uh, the Yankees train is rolling along just fine. Um, and they're about to get the best pitcher in baseball back on their team. We'll see how he's, he was performing great in the minors. So yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I trust Garrett Cole to kind of know his body and come back when he's healthy. And I'm sure he will be fantastic. Yeah. Every time someone starts to say like Garrett Cole is maybe starting to regress or, you know, injury or whatever, he wins the Cy Young. So yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm expecting him to be pretty good. Tough first assignment. Um, yeah, the but, uh, the O's have been great. Uh, the O's have had the best offense in baseball over the last like two months. So yeah, um, but yeah, I, I think he'll be fine. Uh, and that's all uh, I got for league news. All right. So uh, Ben, when we were at the event at Bush Stadium, we were given the official Cardinals media guide. Wow. 
um, which I have never had one of these before. Um, I don't know if it's something you can get outside of like press events, but this is the book that they give to pretty much anybody, all the broadcast booths, anyone who might be reporting on the St. Louis Cardinals. It's almost like a yearbook, but for the St. Louis Cardinals, right? It has, um, like profiles and whatnot for every single player and coach and just like person affiliated with the uh, organization. So the broadcast booth or whoever it can, whoever it is, if they want to talk about a guy, they can flip to the page. They get a whole bunch of information about him. Uh, um, how you say their name, where they're born, when they join the team, et cetera. Just a ton of favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> favorite color. Uh, pets names, you know, whatever it might be. And so uh, they've got a little section here um, called career notes or player notes. So I thought it might be fun to do a modified version of our classic game. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open the book to a random page and I'm going to read you facts from the career notes. And you have to guess which player these facts. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll point out to the listener that while I did receive one of these, I left it at Nate's house. <laughs> so it is not handy. So, uh, <laughs> so he can't well, just uh, <laughs> dig through it. But yeah. um, you, uh, I'll tell you live on the air, you've got a little surprise coming in the mail here in the next couple of days. Ooh so, la la. Um, it's poison. Uh, all right, so I am just flipping to a random page here. I'm going to start reading the career notes to you. Ooh, Nate is going to read live on air. This is a big event for him. Um, <laughs> only just learned to read. <laughs> That's really why I'm doing this. So I'm going to do a handful of these because some of these I think will be like easier. Some of them okay. will be a little bit harder. Um, was originally, Rip it, Big Daddy. <laughs> was originally drafted by his home state Seattle Mariners in the 45th round of the 2008 MLB draft, but did not sign and went to the University of Washington, was signed as a minor league free agent by the Mariners following college. Who? that's uh, wow. pretty vague. You got to guess. So he's from Washington. And it, it, are these people on the 40 man or is it just people in the organization? Um, it is... From what I can tell, they basically it, it's like all the players on the 40 men and then notable prospects as you get deeper into it. Yeah, um, th there, there is like the top 30 prospects or whatever. But yeah. I'll say I'm pulling from like just randomly in the middle. So it's okay. very likely going to either be uh, a current 40 man or a very top prospect. OK, who the hell Oh, you know, that kind of sounds like Riley O'Brien. Um, I don't really know Riley O'Brien's college career, but I do know that we got him from the Mariners. Um, and I don't think he was highly regarded. And he might be from the area. So I'm going to say Riley O'Brien. No, it is not correct, but it is a good guess. Damn it. Um, okay. Uh, missed parts of the 2022 and 2023 season following Tommy John surgery. Performed by Dr. Keith Meister in Arlington, Texas in June of 2022. Okay, so he's definitely a pitcher. Super specific about the... Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a pitcher that was drafted. He missed a couple of years. Um, I, I don't know. Um, not Pilate. He was drafted by the Cardinals. Libertor was drafted by the Rays. Also, he's from Arizona, I think. Um, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Ryan Fernandez. Nope. Uh, acquired in a trade with the Rays in exchange for infield outfielder Richie Palacios, January fifth, two thousand twenty-four. Originally signed with the Mariners, has been traded twice in his career, with the Cardinals becoming the third organization. Okay, Andrew Kittredge. Yes, Andrew Kittredge. All right. Um, that's so funny. I, he's like in his late 30s or mid 30s. I just am not thinking, uh, did not know he had anything to do with the Mariners at any point ever. So, yeah, me neither. That's, that is news to me. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to do another one. 
signed a two year contract extension on January 22nd, 2024, avoiding a potential arbitration hearing. Um, Tommy Edmond? Tommy Edmond, you got it. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was on the top one. All right, let's do one happening. More. Let's do one more. All right, who are we going to get? Uh, okay. Joins his fifth major league team. Uh, you had the Athletics, Yankees, Reds, Twins, and Cardinals. So read those teams off again. Uh, athletics, Yankees, Reds, Twins. Athletics, Yankees, Reds, Twins. Athletics, Yankees, Reds, and Twins. Um, oh, Sunny Gray. Sunny Gray. Boom. All right. You got it. Yeah. All right. Um, Just forget about Sunny Gray being on the Yankees. That was so brief. Yeah, it was. Was that fun? Did you like that? Is that good? Is that a sure, good game? Nate, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> Don't ask me that. The media guide's really nice. I was, it's uh, it's cool to get one. I hope to get one in the mail someday. Teehee. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, maybe we'll do this again. We'll see. Um, the show or the game? Por que no los dos? Okay. Uh, all right. So that'll do it for, for this week's episode. We'll be back, as always, um, next week. Hopefully a good series, an emotional night at Rookwood Field tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully the Cardinals can salvage this series against the Marlins and, and split it with a... With a uh, or I guess, no, that was the last... This is the last game of the series. Yeah, so you lost said the four-game series, series earlier. I had no idea what you're talking about, so... Yeah, it's a three... I don't know why I was thinking it was a four-game series. So they lost the series against the Marlins, but we're ending positively uh, still right around 500 and they're going to have a great week and we're going to be back next week to celebrate how good the St. Louis Cardinals are and how much fun we're having. Uh, So tell your friends, tell your dogs, tell your cats. Happy Father's Day. Until next week, go Cardinals. Okay, thank you. Bye. Why you stab me?